Hi everyone, today we're going to discuss again another topic in soil mechanics and that is soil compaction. Compaction, in general, is the densification of soil by removal of air, which requires mechanical energy. The degree of compaction of soil is measured in terms of its dry unit weight. When water is added to the soil during compaction, it acts as a softening agent on the soil particles. The soil particles slip over each other and move into a densely packed position. The dry unit weight after compaction first increases as the moisture content increases. So this is what happens when a soil is compacted. Regionally, if you look at this figure, there are lots of void spaces and after compaction, the void spaces are reduced. And if you look at the volume of soil, the volume of the soil mass is thereby reduced also because of soil compaction. So, uh, if you again compare the two figures, so if you look at this uh, figure, you'll see that water in here is just almost the same as the volume of air. So, kapag dinagdagan natin yung lupa ng tubig, mas nagiging compacted yung ating lupa. Mas madali siyang i-compact kasi mas nagadikit yung particles ng ating soil. So, kaya pag dinagdagan natin ng water yung isang soil mas mas madali siyang i-compact and ganito yung nagiging results. So, pag mas madaming tubig, mas makakompact siya and nababawasan yung void spaces natin na ino-occupy ng air. So, why do we compact soils or why do we need to compact soil? Number one, compaction increases shear strength. So, if you compare two soil types, I mean, two samples of same soil type, the one that is not compacted and the one that is compacted, you will notice that the compacted soil has higher shear strength than the not compacted soils. So, kasi mas yung lupa natin kapag nag-compact, mas nagiging intact yung soil particles natin. Kaya mas nataas yung strength niya. Compaction also increases unit weight of the soil. Why? So, again, if you compare two, vol two areas, I mean two volume of soil, yung isa, halimbawa, one cubic meter again, ng lupa na buhaghag and 1 cubic meter na compacted, you'll notice na mas mabigat yung ating compacted soil kesa sa buhaghag natin na 1 cubic meter of soil. Dahil mas madami ng soil particles yung na-occupy, nag-occupy dun sa 1 cubic meter of soil na compacted kesa dun sa buhaghag natin na soil. So, therefore, compaction increases unit weight of the soil. Number three, compaction decreases undesirable settlement. Why? So, the, pro, I mean, the objective of compaction is to reduce the, set, the settlement of Soil. So, yung pagkabuhaghag ng lupa, mas buhaghag kasi yung lupa, mas unstable siya. So, kapag unstable yung ating lupa at nilagyan natin siya ng structure, magkakaroon siya ng settlement. Kasi nga, ikaw, pag kinumpare natin yung compacted soil sa buhaghag na lupa, Kapag yung ating buhaghag na lupa ang pinaglagyan natin at nilagyan natin ng loop, so yung spaces, yung void spaces dun sa babang baba, pwede pang ma-occupy nung ating 
soil particles na nasa taas. So, kapag in natin siya ng load, saka pa lamang siya makukontact. And therefore, magkakaroon ng undesirable settlement. Kumpara doon sa soil na compacted na, na halos hindi na ma-occupy ng soil particles na nasa taas yung spaces sa babang baba at nil pag nilagyan natin ng load yung ating lupa, hindi na magkakaroon ng settlement kasi na-compact na siya. In, uh, and then, compaction also increases stability of slopes and embankment. So, ang slopes natin at embankment natin, kapag atin siyang na-compact, mas nagiging stable siya. So, compared sa slopes and embankment na hindi nakukompact, mas magiging prone siya sa landslide and sa pagbuko. Okay? And also, compaction decreases permeability. Why? So, kasi, ang compaction, din na binabawasan niya yung void spaces natin. So, kapag kukunti na lang yung void spaces natin, kukunti na lamang yung pwedeng mag-permit na tubig sa kanya, and therefore, it decreases permeability. Okay? So, that are, those are the reasons why we compact soils. Again, it increases shear strength, it increases unit weight, it decreases undesirable settlement, it increases stability of slopes and embankment, and lastly, it decreases permeability. So, in construction, we need to compact soils and what are those equipment that are used to compact soils? So, number one is what we call smooth wheel rollers. So, smooth wheel rollers are like this. And smooth wheel rollers are suitable for proof rolling subgrades and for finishing operations of fills with sandy and clayey sills, soils. rather. These rollers provide 100% coverage under the wheels with ground contact pressures as high as 310 to 380 kilopascal or kilonewton per meter squared. They are not suitable for producing high unit weights of soil compaction when used on thicker layers. Second one is what we call the pneumatic rubber tire roller. So if you see this, this is the pneumatic rubber tire roller. And these rollers are better in many respects than the smooth wheel rollers. The former are heavily loaded with several rows of tires. So these are the rows of tires in a pneumatic rubber tire roller. And these tires are closely spaced four to six in a row. The contact pressure under the tires can range from 600 to 700 kilonewton per meter squared or kilopascal, and they are produced about 70 to 80 percent coverage. Pneumatic rollers can be used for sandy and clay soil compaction. Compaction is achieved by a combination of pressure and kneading action. Number three equipment is what we call ship's foot rollers. So the ship's foot rollers are like this. So if you look at this one, this is the ship, ship's foot rollers. And ship's foot rollers are drums with a large number of projections. The area of each projection may range from 25 to 85 centimeters squared and these rollers are most effective in compacting clay soils. The contact pressure under the projections can range from 1,400 to 7,000 kilonewton per meter squared. And during compaction in the field, the initial passes compact the lower portion of a lift. Compaction at the top and middle of a lift is done at a later stage. And then we have what we call vibratory rollers. And Vibratory rollers are extremely efficient in compacting granular soils. Vibrators can be attached to smooth wheel, pneumatic, rubber tired, or ship's foot rollers to provide vibratory effects to the soil. The vibration is produced by rotating 
of center heights, handheld vibrating plates can be used for effective compaction of granular soils over a limited area. Vibrating plates are also gang-mounted on machines. This paste can be used in less restricted areas. So, vibratory rollers are just like this. So, these are rotating off-center weights and it can be uh, put to any equipment, to any sm uh, either smooth wheel, pneumatic rubber tired, or ship's foot rollers. So this is attached here in vibratory rollers para mag mas ma-enhance yung pag-compact ng soils natin kasi may vibrator. So those are the equipment used in compacting soils. And in compaction, we have to note that at a moisture content equal zero, the moist unit weight is equal to the dry unit weight. When the moisture content is gradually increased and the same compactive effort is used for compaction, the weight of the soil solids in a unit volume gradually increases. Beyond a certain moisture content, any increase in the moisture content tends to reduce the dry weight. This phenomenon occurs because the water takes up the spaces that would have been occupied by the soil particles. So the moisture content at which the maximum dry unit weight is attained is generally referred to as the optimum moisture content. Uh, if we are going to explain optimum moisture content and the maximum dry unit weight. So ang lupa class, kapag buhaghag siya at dinagdagan natin siya ng tubig, so, mas makukompak natin yung lupa kasi nga medyo moist siya. So, mas makukompak natin kasi nagdidikat yung particles natin because of water. So, yung water natin yung nagsisilbing glue dun sa ating soil particles. Tapos, pag dinagdagan pa natin siya ng dinagdagan ng tubig, pwede pa rin natin makompak yung ating lupa. Pero, at some point, ma-reach na yung maximum dry unit weight natin. Dahil, pag sumobra naman yung tubig natin, anong, ang mangyayari dun sa lupa, magiging liquid na siya, may hirapan na siyang ma-compact ma dahil liquid na yung ating tubig. So, it doesn't mean na pag tinaasan natin ang tinaasan, yung ating moisture content, is mataas din yung ating... Uh, Maximum dry unit weight, I mean, yung pag-compact, yung mas mataas yung moisture content is mas tataas din yung uh, ating compaction. So, hindi. So, at a certain point, pag na-reach na nung ating lupa yung level ng moisture content kung saan dun siya pinaka-makocompact. So, bababa ulit yung ating dry unit weight ng lupa kapag na-reach natin yun. And, yung moisture content, kung saan pinakamakukompak natin yung lupa natin, is what we call optimum moisture content. So, pag tumaas na yung moisture content natin sa optimum moisture content, bababa na ulit yung, uh, yung rate of compaction natin, yung ability nung, uh, natin na makompak yung soils. Dahil, magiging liquid na siya. So, yung optimum moisture content natin is dapat nating malaman para doon na yun yung iaattain natin na moisture content sa field para mas makompact natin yung lupa natin. Kasi pag sumabra naman doon, again nga, hindi na natin siya makokompact masyado. So, and syempre, at that moisture content, doon yung pinaka-maximum natin na dry unit weight. Doon na yung Dun, yun na yung ability ng lupa natin na makompak siyang maigi. So, that would be the maximum dry unit weight at optimum moisture content. Da, again, bakit daw kapag nag-increase pa yung moisture content natin, hindi na natin siya makokompak masyado kapag lumagpas na sa optimum moisture content? Kasi, Beyond a certain moisture content, any increase in the moisture content tends to reduce the dry unit weight. This phenomenon occurs because the water takes up the spaces that would have been occupied by the soil particles. So, imbis na kasi yung spaces ay 
particles ng lupa ang mag-occupy, na-occupy na ng tubig, kaya nahihirapan na tayong i-compact yung source. So, that's why we have to know what is the optimum moisture content of soil in order for us to attain what we call the maximum dry unit weight of soil. Okay? So, in compaction, there are factors affecting it. So, number one is the effect of soil type and the effect of compaction effort. So, in effect of soil type, the soil type that is grain size distribution, shape of the soil grains, specific gravity of soil solids, and amount of and type of clay materials present has a great influence on the maximum dry unit weight and optimum moisture content. Class, depende din sa ating soil type yung ating compaction. Halimbawa, mas madaling o compact ang clays at silts kesa sa gravel and sand. So, this is a table of comparison kung paano yung moisture content and dry unit weight ng iba't ibang klase ng lupa. So, this is the compaction curve for poorly graded sand, for high plasticity clay, for high plastic, I mean silty clay, and for sandy silt. So, this is an example of a compaction curve. And then, we have Another factor in compaction, and that is the effect of compaction effort. So, if the compaction effort per unit volume of soil is changed, the moisture unit weight curve also changes. From the observation, as the compaction effort is increased, the maximum dry unit weight of compaction is also increased. So, pag mas mataas yung compaction effort natin, or yung energy, mas ma mas nataas din yung maximum dry unit weight. Mas nakukompact kasi natin yung lupa. And also, as the compaction effort is increased, the optimum moisture content is decreased to some extent. The preceding statements are true for all soils. So, kapag nga, yung compaction effort naman natin, masyado na tayong nag-effort sa kakukompact, nababawasan naman yung atong moisture content kasi di ba nag-evaporate din yung ating uh, too big. So, nababawasan yung optimum moisture content natin at some extent. Okay? And note, however, that the degree of compaction is not directly proportional to the compaction effort. Ibig sabihin, hindi porket mas mataas yung ating compaction effort is mas magiging mataas din yung ating degree of compaction. That is not true. Okay? So, this is an example of uh, results of dry unit weight versus moisture content and the number of blows per layer. So, if you look at this one, so, mas madaming blows per layer, mas mataas yung kanyang dry unit weight. But, again, the degree of compaction is not directly proportional to the compaction effort. So, this is just an example sa sandy clay. Nung inobservahan yung sandy clay na kinompak siya, ito yung lumabas. Mas nataas yung ating dry unit weight at 50 blows per layer compared sa 20 blows per layer. Okay? So, in the laboratory, we have to test the compaction of soil. So, para malaman natin yung optimum moisture content. Kasi nga, yun yung kailangan natin i-achieve. Lalong-lalo na sa mga kalsada natin. So, pag uh, ang lupa natin ay medyo buhaghag, kailangan natin siyang i-compact. So, if you look at the... Uh, kung nakakita kayo sa kalsada, kadalasan nakakakita kayo ng pison. So, dapat may optimum moisture content. Yung tubig na idadagdag is kailangan nating computing using the uh, laboratory test results. Eh, kailangan nating malaman ano yung optimum moisture content natin. So, there are ways in order for us to determine the optimum moisture content and the maximum dry unit weight of soil. And uh, in the laboratory, number one test used is what we call the standard Proctor test. So, in the Proctor test, 
the soil is compacted in a mold that has a volume of 344 cubic centimeters. So this is a mold that is 344 cubic centimeters. And the diameter of the mold is 101.6 millimeters. During the laboratory test, the mold is attached to a base plate. So this is a base plate at the bottom and to an extension at the top. So this is an extension. Inahati kasi ito. Pwede itong tanggalin itong top na to. At ito lang yung volume niya lang is 944 cubic centimeters. Tapos ito ay may extension. And then... The soil is mixed with varying amounts of water and then compacted in three layers of soils. And three equal layers by a hammer that delivers 25 blows to each layer. So ito, itong ating uh, mold na to, nilalagyan siya ng lupa. So yung ating lupa na toyo, lalagyan siya ng konti munang tubig. Tapos ilalagay natin dito yung one third muna. And then, lala, pagkatapos nun, i-blow natin using this one. Ito ay pang blow, pang compact. So, 25 blows each layer siya. Ito yung hammer natin. 2.5 kg and has a drop. So, na, na, na taas ba ba itong hammer nito? So, tapos, pag na-compact na natin siya, lalagyan ulit natin yung panibago to and then 25, i-co-compact ulit natin ng 25 blows. And then yung third layer, i-co-compact natin ng 25 blows. Tapos, i-determine natin yung weight nito. Itong mold na ito. And then, we put, we get some sample para makuha natin yung moisture content. Tapos, yung natitira nating lupa, dadagdagan ulit natin yun ng moisture content. Tapos, Again, we repeat the process. Tatlong beses ulit natin siyang lalagyan. First layer, second layer, and third layer. Par and every layer is 25 blows. Hanggang sa makakuha tayo ng 4 to 5 samples. Pero hanggat hindi nababa yung weight nito, hindi tayo matigil. So, ito kasi, di ba, kinuha, kinumpak natin yung lupa dito ng tatlong beses. Tapos, Pagkatapos nun, if a flatten, kukunin yung weight nito at saka, so, itong mold na to, ikukuhin natin yung weight. Tapos, syempre, kapag nataas na, na, nataas ng moisture content, mataas din man din. Tapos, kapag, saka lamang tayo matigil, kapag bumaba na yung volume, I mean, yung weight nitong lupa na ito, pag, winay natin at dinagdagan natin na ng dinagdagan ng tubig. So, ito yung example sa laboratory. Ito yun. Ito yung details ng ating uh, standard proctor tool. And if you look at this video, ganito siya ginagawa. So, yan yung blow. Let's play the video. It's well, so just uh, attach the video in the presentation. Nagyahang kasi hindi hindi So, yung every drop ng hammer natin, yung matawag na hindi. Touch ko na lang yung video yung sa presentation. Okay. So, for each test, the moist unit weight of compaction unit weight can be calculated as weight over the volume of the mold where weight is weight of the compacted soil in the mold and volume VM is the volume of the mold. And then, with the known moisture content, the dry unit weight can be calculated as unit weight plus 1 plus MC. So, that is the uh, formula for the dry unit weight, diba? With given moist unit weight and moisture content. We already studied that in the previous lessons. 
And then the values of dry unit weights can be determined and plotted against the corresponding moisture contents to obtain the maximum dry unit weight and the optimum moisture content of the soil. So this is the results from the laboratory. Again, di ba sinabi ko na kukunin ang kukunin yung moisture content at saka pag bumaba pa lang, saka pa lang natin makukuha yung ating optimum moisture content. So, ipa-plot yung dry unit weight versus the moisture content and then you'll achieve the optimum moisture content. Again, the optimum, the, the maximum dry unit weight is this one and the moisture content at the maximum dry unit weight is what we call the optimum moisture content. For a given moisture content, W and degree of saturation, the dry unit weight comp of compaction can be calculated as GS unit weight of water plus over 1 plus ear leather. So that is the formula for dry unit weight as we all know. For a given moisture content, the theoretical maximum dry unit weight is obtained when no air is in the void spaces. That is when the degree of saturation equals 100%. So, the formula is the unit weight at zero air void that is equal to GS unit weight of water over 1 plus WGS or equal to this. Unit weight of water over moisture content plus 1 over the specific gravity of soil. So, in the laboratory, we also have what we call the modified Proctor test. So, the first one is standard Proctor test and Another one is what we call the modified proctor test. So, in determining the compaction in modified proctor test and in conducting the modified proctor test, the same mold is used with a volume of 944 cubic centimeters. Ganun din sa mold natin na ginamit sa standard proctor. The difference only is Compacte, it is compacted in 5 layers by a hammer that has a mass of 4.54 kilograms. So, yung ating uh, uh, layers sa uh, standard proctor is 3 layers lang. Pero sa modified proctor test natin is 5 layers siya. And yung mass ng ating hammer ay mas mabigat compared sa standard proctor test. So, sa modified proctor test, it's 4.54 kilograms. So the drop of the hammer is 457 mm and the number of hammer blows for each layer is kept at 25 as in the case of the standard proctor test. Pero yung drop ng ating hammer is still 25. So 25 blows pa rin siya. So if we compare the two hammers, so this is the one used in standard proctor test and this is the one used in modified proctor test. So, specifications for field compaction. In most specifications for earthquake, earthwork, rather, the contractor is instructed to achieve a compacted field dry unit weight of 90 to 95% of the maximum dry unit weight determined in the laboratory by either the standard or modified proctor test. This is a specification for relative compaction, which can be expressed as relative compaction or percent compaction is equal to the dry unit weight of the soil at the field over the maximum dry unit weight that kinuha natin sa lab multiplied by 100. So, para makuha natin yung 95% compaction, we have to determine the dry unit weight. So, makukuha natin yung, yung dry unit weight makukuha natin sa field. And ito naman yung makukuha natin sa laboratory. So, for the compaction of granular soil specifications, sometimes are written in terms of the required relative density or the required relative compaction. So, we already discussed the formula for the relative density and ito yun by the unit weight in the field and the minimum dry unit weight and the maximum dry unit. So, paano natin kukunin naman yung dry unit weight ng, sa field? Kasi diba, in order for us to get the, the uh, dry unit weight, the maximum dry unit weight, we use uh, standard proctor test or, or the uh, modified proctor test. So, sa field naman, 
merong three methods. And the standard procedures for determining the field unit weight of compaction include number one, sand code method, two, rubber balloon method, and three, nuclear method. So again, class, why are we going to get this uh, field unit weight of compaction? So, di ba, again, para makuha natin yung relative compaction is equal to dry unit weight at the field over the maximum dry unit weight at the laboratory. So, ang nakukuha pa lang natin is yung maximum dry unit weight sa laboratory using standard proctor test and the modified proctor test, either of the two. So, Para makuha natin yung percent compaction ng lupa, we need to know what is the dry unit weight ng lupa natin sa mismong field. So, para malaman natin gaano nakakompact yung ating lupa na pagtatayuan sa field. So, there are three ways again and this is the three ways to use. So, number one is what we call the sand cone method. So, sa field natin, the sand cone device consists of a glass or plastic jar with a metal cone attached at its top and the jar is filled with uniform dry Ottawa sand. So, this is what it looks like. This is the dry Ottawa sand and this is the sand cone device in general. And this is the jar and these are the parts of the sand cone jar natin. And then, the sand cone device consists of a glass or plastic jar with a metal cone attached at its top, and the jar is filled with uniform dry Ottawa sand. The combined weight of the jar, the cone, and the sand filling the jar is determined as W1. So, in the field, a small hole is excavated in the area where the soil has been compacted. So, di baga, again, balikan natin yung ating... Uh, discussion. Kailangan natin i-compact yung soil natin using smooth wheel rollers or pwedeng pneumatic rubber tire roller or ship's foot roller. So kapag na-compact na natin yung lupa na yun, magkukuha tayo na mag, magdidig tayo ng maliit na hole. So yung hole na yun, para ma-determine na Bakit tayo magdidig ng hole? Para ma-determine natin gaano na ka-compact yung ating lupa. Kasi di ba sabi again doon sa discussion natin, sa field daw ni require sa specifications sa engineer, ng engineer natin na about 90% to 95% compacted siya. So, kailangan nating malaman gaano na ka-compact yung ating lupa using to me the laboratory test and the field method test. So, di ba, nakuha na natin yung ating maximum dry unit weight sa laboratory. So, again, the formula for relative compaction is equal to the dry unit weight at the field over the maximum dry unit weight at the laboratory. So, if we get, we're going to get the relative compaction, again, it will be equal to uh, that formula. So, nakuha na natin kasi yung maximum dry unit weight natin sa laboratory. Ulitin ko. So, ang kailangan na lang natin malaman is yung dry yung unit weight ng lupa natin sa field. And, kaya, kaya meron tayong small hole na in-excavate. So, if the weight of the moist soil excavated from the hole is determined and the moisture content of the excavated Soil is known. The dry weight of the soil can be obtained as so equal siya sa W2. What is W2? Yung moist soil na inexcavate natin, di ba? Nag-excavate tayo. Kukunin natin yung weight nung, nung lupa na dinig natin. So, yung hole na yun, may lupa tayo makukuha. Ida-determine natin yung weight na yun. And over... 1 plus moisture content over 100. Ano yung moisture content? Kukuha tayo ng sample dun sa kinuha nating lupa na dinig natin. And we have to determine the moisture content. Again, paano natin kukunin yung moisture content? Sa laboratory ulit natin kukunin using the oven. So, are we going to get the moisture content? The moisture content is equal to the weight of water over the weight of soil. So, and then... The values of WC and 
sand. So this is the cone and sand, the dry sand, the unit weight of the dry sand are determined from the calibration done in the laboratory. So predetermined na siya. The dry unit weight of compaction made in the field then can be determined as follows. So yung dry unit weight natin na nung ating lupa is equal to dry weight of the soil excavated from the hole. So yung dry weight ng ating buong lupang in-excavate dun sa hole after nating i-oven and then all over the volume of the hole. So, we have to determine the volume. Paano natin madadetermine yung volume ng hole using the Otawa sand? Kasi yung Otawa sand, meron siyang dry unit weight na. So, yung unit weight nun, makukuha lang natin, ah, makukuha na natin, and yung ating volume, paano makukuha yung volume ng hole? So, kung gaano kadaming, ah, di ba, ang ating unit weight is equal to mass over volume. So, yung ating, I mean, weight over volume. So, yung volume ay para makuha, ay predetermined na yung unit weight ng ating uh, otawa sand. So, makukuha naman natin kung gaano kadami yung weight ng sand na nilagay natin dun sa hole natin. That will be the weight over volume. So, pag nakuha natin yung weight, and the, e divide natin siya sa unit weight ng otawasan natin, makukuha natin kung ano yung volume ng hole natin. Okay? And that would be the dry unit weight at the field. So again, if we divide this to the unit weight at the laboratory, the maximum dry unit weight at the laboratory, we're going to get the percent compaction of the soil. So, another method in determining the dry unit weight at the field is the rubber balloon method. So, the procedure for the rubber balloon method is similar to that for the sand cone method. So, magdidig din tayo ng hole, a test hole is made and the moist weight of soil removed from the hole and its moisture content are determined. However, the volume of hole is determined by introducing it to it a rubber balloon filled with water from a calibrated vessel from which the volume can be read directly. So, ito yung balloon natin. Again, ang gagawin ulit natin, we'll go, we're going to dig a hole. Tapos, yung hole na yun, lalagay, ay yung nakuha nating lupa, i-weigh natin at kukunin natin yung moist weight. And then, after that, we're going to put it in the oven at kukunin natin yung dry weight. So, uh, pag sinubtract natin yung moist weight at saka yung dry weight over the dry weight of the soil, we're going to get again the moisture content. So, how are we going to determine the volume naman? So, the, ang kukunin naman natin is yung volume ng lupa natin. So, yung volume makikita mababasa na dito uh, directly nang mababasa so the again the dry unit weight will be equal to the dry weight of the soil so after of makuha natin yung weight pagka oven natin dun sa lupa over yung volume is determined na dito sa ating balloon so may mababasa na siya dito sa ating balloon and lastly, we have what we call the nuclear density. Nuclear density meters are often used for determining the compacted dry unit weight of soil. And the density meters operate either in drilled holes or from the ground surface. It uses a radioactive isotope source and the isotope gives off gamma rays that radiate back to the meter's detector. Then soil absorbs more radiation than loose soil. The instrument measures the weight of soil per unit volume and the weight of water present in a unit volume of soil. The dry unit weight of compacted soil can be determined by subtracting the weight of water from the moist unit weight of soil. So, yung ating uh, nuclear density meter, ito yun. And uh, dinedetermine na din niya yung volume na nung lupa. So, yung weight of wet soil per unit volume and the weight of water present in a unit weight of volume of soil. You're just going to, to subtract weight of water from the weight of wet soil per unit volume. And you'll get the dry unit weight na at the field. 
and that is the nuclear density. In addition, in the field, we have what we call special compaction techniques. So, kapag hindi na, na gamit yung uh, vibratory rollers, uh, ship's foot rollers, uh, smooth wheel rollers, and pneumatic rubber type rollers, kasi ang ginagamit natin sa special compaction techniques is uh, lupa naman is for the compaction na natin to ginagamit yung special compaction techniques natin. So, Several compaction techniques of compaction have been developed for deep compaction of in places, and these techniques are used in the field for large scale compaction works. Among these, the popular methods are what we call vibroflotation, dynamic compaction, and blasting. So, what is vibroflotation? It is a technique for in situ densification of thick layers of loose granular soil deposits and it, it was developed in Germany in the 1930s and the first vibrant flotation device was used in the United States about 10 years later, later and the process involves the use of vibrofloat unit also called the vibrating unit which is about 2.1 meters long this vibrating unit has an eccentric weight inside it and can be developed Ascent can develop a centrifugal force other, which enables the vibrating unit to vibrate horizontally. Are openings at the bottom and top of the vibrating unit for water jets. The vibrating unit is attached to a follow-up pipe. So, vibroflotation has four stages. The number one is the jet at the bottom of the vibrofloat is turned on the lower and lower onto the ground. So this is the vibrofloat. So at the bottom of the vibrofloat is turned and on and lowered into the ground. The water jet creates a quick condition in the soil and it allows the vibrating unit to sink in the ground. Granular material is poured from the top of the hole and the water from the lower jet is transferred to the jet at the top of the vibrating unit. This water carries the granular material down the hole. Last stage is the vibrating unit is gradually raised in about 0.3 meter lifts and held vibrating for about 30 seconds at each lift. This process compacts the soil to the desired unit weight. So, in addition pa, yung ating vibroflotation, dynamic compaction, and blasting, for deep compaction siya. Yung atin kasing ship's foot rollers na, and then pneumatic rubber tire, and uh, vibratory rollers, and smooth wheel rollers, sa ibabaw lang natin kasi siya ng lupa, uh, nag, ang compaction activity. Ito, talaga nag nagdidig ng hole, and then para mag-compact dun sa ilalim. Okay? So, ito yung four stages ng vibroflotation. And then, we have what we call dynamic compaction. Dynamic compaction is a technique that has gained popularity in the United States for the densification of granular soil deposits. This process consists primarily of dropping a heavy weight repeatedly on the ground at regular intervals. The weight of the hammer used varies over a range of 80 to 360 kN, and the height of the hammer drop varies between 7.5 and 30.5 meters. The stress waves generated by the hammer drops aid in the densification. The degree of compaction achieved at a given site depends on the following three factors. The weight of hammer, height of hammer drop, spacing of locations at which the hammer is dropped. So, the dynamic compaction is like this one. So, there are holes and ito yung ating weight tapos kinocompact ito. Um, nilalaglag sa lupa at ito may weight. Ito ay weight. So, ito siya. Yan, ganyan siya sa actual. And then lastly is blasting. Is, it is a technique that has been used successfully in many projects for the densification of granular soils. The general soil grain sizes suitable for compaction by blasting are the same as those for compaction by vibroflotation. The process involves the detonation of explosive charges such as 60% dynamite at a certain depth 
below the ground surface in a saturated soil. The lateral spacing of the charges varies from about 3 to 9 meters. 3 to 5 successful detonations are usually necessary to achieve the desired compaction. Compaction up to a relative density of about 80%, up to a depth of about 18 meters over a large area, can easily achieve by using these pressures. Usually, the explosive charges are placed at a depth of about two-thirds of the thickness of the soil layer desired to be compacted. So, ito yung blasting natin. So, meron tayong mga dynamites and pinapa sabog natin ito para mas mag ma disturb yung lupa sa ilalim and then para makompak siya. So, in order for us to understand more of compaction, we have to solve problems. So, sample number one is a laboratory test results of a standard Proctor test are given in the following table. So, the volume of the mold is 944 cubic centimeters and the weight of moist soil in the mold is 16.81, and 17.85. So, yan, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, moisture content niya. So, if we look at this one, so, ito, tumaas siya, di ba? Tumaas. Tapos bumaba na dito. So, kapag nakadalawa na kayo or tatlo na nag-decrease, saka palang tayo titigil. So, we have to determine the maximum dry unit weight compaction and the optimum moisture content. So, how are we going to get it? So, in solution, so, di ba? The weight of the mold is given. I mean, the volume of the mold is given, and that is the 944 cubic centimeter. And then we have to get the weight of the soil, and then moist unit weight. So how are we going to get the moist unit weight? So we have to divide 16.81 over 944. So we have to get this one, 17.81. And then, the corresponding moisture content, ito. And, 17.81 over 1 plus MC is equal to 16.19. So, again, ganun din dito. This will be 17.84 divided by 944. That will be in Newton per cubic centimeter. So, para ma-express natin sa unit weight, i-convert lang natin. So, para maging kilonewton per cubic meter siya, it will be 18.90. In order for us to get the dry unit weight, it, this will be 18.90 over 1 plus 0.12. This will be 16.87. And this will be the whole process. So, we repeat the process in order for us to get the moist unit weight and the dry unit weight. Of so, this... Results are plotted in a graph. So, the dry unit weight versus the moisture content. So, itong dry unit weight natin dito and the moisture content will be plotted. So, 16.19 and 10 is ito. And then, 16.87 and 12 is ito. And 14 and 17.11. 16.74 and 16 is this one, and then 16.02 and 18 is this one, and 20 and 15.32. So kapag tayo ay naplat na natin itong points na to, magdo-drawing tayo ng curve. At pag nakuha na natin yung curve, kukunin natin yung pinakamataas doon. At kung ano yung moisture content talagabas dito, at yung maximum dry unit weight, that would be the, volume, uh, the optimum moisture content and the maximum dry unit weight. So, from the graph, the plot of unit weight, dry versus moisture content is shown. So, from the plot, we see that the maximum dry unit weight is equal to 17.15 and the optimum moisture content is 14.4%. Again, class, this is just an estimation. Pwede pa rin mag magbago. So, in other examples, pwedeng ito na mismo, yung ating 
maximum dry unit weight that is 17.11 and the optimum moisture content is 14%. Pwede naman yun. Um, uh, pero pag masyado nang malaki yung difference nitong dalawang ito, we just have to plot para makita natin yung difference ng ating moisture content at yung ating dry unit weight. But this will be acceptable, 14 and 17.11. Okay, pasta estimation din lang siya. Ito, ating moisture content and the maximum dry unit rate. Pero pwede din na ito na mismo ang gamitin nating sagot. Okay? For sample problem number 2, a soil in its natural state has a wet density of 155.1 PCF or pounds per cubic feet and a moisture content of 36%. After compaction, its maximum dry density is 118.5 pounds per cubic feet. Determine the percent compaction of the soil. That is, and given specific gravity equal to 2.65. So, how are you going to solve the problem? Again, percent compaction is equal to the dry density of the soil over maximum dry density times 100. So, how are we going to get the dry density? Given na yung ating 118.5 BCF na maximum dry density, walang problema. But um, in order for us to get the dry density, ang given lang natin is moist density with moisture content of 36%. So how are we going to get the dry density? It's equal to G plus GMC over 1 plus E times unit weight of water. So... 155.1 equals 2.65 plus 2.65 times 0.36 over 1 plus E multiplied by 62.4. So, in in English unit, 9.81 is equal to 62.4 KSF. Kilo, pas, uh, kilo, uh, sorry, kilo pounds per square feet. No, no, no. Pounds per square feet only, not KSF. KSF. It is just PSF, rather. 62.4 PSF. Pounds per square feet. So, by substituting the values in the formula, we'll get E equals 0.45, the value of the void ratio. So, in order for us to get the dry unit weight, it will be equal to G over 1 plus E times unit weight of water equals 2.65 over 1.45 times 60.4 is equals 114.04 PCF or pounds per cubic. In order for us to get the percent compaction, percent compaction is equal to the dry density of the soil over the maximum dry density. Again, the dry density is 114.04 and 118.5 is already given. You just have to multiply it to to get the percent compaction and the percent compaction is equal to 96.24%. That is the solution for problem number 2. For sample problem number 3, an embankment for a highway 30 meters wide and 1.2 meters in compacted thickness is to be constructed from a sandy soil tracked from a barrel pit. The water content of the sandy soil in the barrel pit is 15% and its void ratio is 0.75. The specification requires the embankment be compacted to a dry unit weight of 18.2 kN per cubic meter. So length of embankment is 1.5 km. Assume G equals 2.7 and determine the volume of material required. So how are we going to solve the problem? So if we're going to solve the problem, if we're going to analyze it, we have to first get the volume of the finished embankment. Ito yung uh, required. So, the volume of the finished embankment is equal to 30. What is 30? Yung ating embankment daw is 30 meters wide. So, this will be the 30 meters multiplied by 1.2. Yun yung area. That would be in 1.2 meter thickness. And it is 1.5 kilometers long. So, width times length times 
thickness, this will be the volume of the embankment. That is 54,000 cubic meters. So, ito yung required sa atin, yung finished embankment. So, ang given natin is, meron tayong sandy soil track from a barrow pit. Ito yung ilalagay natin, yung sandy soil natin na galing sa barrow pit. Yung sandy soil daw natin galing sa barrow pit ay may 15% na moisture content at may void ratio na 75% or 0.75. Ang requirement natin is dapat is 18.2 kN per cubic meter yung dry unit weight nitong embankment na ito. So, paano natin ma-achieve yun? So, we have to determine first, ano yung ating dry unit weight nitong bad barrow material natin. So, we have to get the dry unit weight of the barrow material. So, ang dry unit weight ng barrow material natin, itong sandy soil natin, is equal to G over 1 plus E times unit weight of water. So, yung specific gravity natin is equal to 2.7. That is 2.7 over 1 plus ang dry unit weight ng barrow material, I mean the, the void ratio of the R uh, barrow material is 0.75. And then, if we multiply it by 9.81, makukuha na natin yung dry unit weight, unit weight ng ating barrow material. And it is equal to 15.135 kN per cubic meter. So, ang ating kailangan is 18.2 kN per cubic meter na unit weight. So, para ma-achieve natin yun, we have to determine kung gaano karami yung volume ng ating barrow material. So, we have to get the volume of the barrow material. So, what is the volume of the barrow material? It will be equal to, uh, you, diba, ano lang siya, ratio and proportion, var, volume of barrow material or var, volume of finished embankment is equal to itong require, dry unit weight of the required over the uh, dry unit weight of the volume at uh, the pit, yung barrow pit natin na kinuha. So, yung required natin is 18.2 kN per cubic meter. And then, yung ating dry unit weight is 15.135 so, if we multiply it to the volume of the finished equipment equals 54,000 cubic meter, we'll get the volume of the barrow material and that is equal to 64,936 cubic meters. That will be the answer for sample problem number three. Okay? And that's all for now. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me personally. So, Thank you and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.